What's up, everybody? Trainer Steve checking in for this momentous momentum morning, the Tuesday edition. We're here holding you accountable to your habits, making sure we're getting an unfair advantage on our day and sticking to those habits that we set out to accomplish for the year of 2021. We hope we're all holding strong. It's the 12th day. And if we've given up already, how are we going to get to those resolutions? So sticking to it as a group, making sure we're commenting below with what we've been working on and our habits. And without further ado, we're going to go into some research on how to alleviate anxiety. And I think this is a big one for people because anxiety is bigger than ever in 2021. So here's some science you should know about involving the anxiety illness in us. Science you should know about. All right, here we go. There's much evidence in support of link between regular exercise and good mental health. Recent researchers found that people with low aerobic and muscular fitness are almost twice as likely to experience depression than their fitter counterparts. The study also found a 60% higher risk of anxiety in people with lower fitness levels. So let's look at some of those health benefits here that we get from fitness reducing mental fatigue reducing stress runners high and of course fighting depression and anxiety a study led by researchers at university college london published in bmc medicine found that people with low aerobic exercise and muscular fitness are almost twice as likely to experience depression they also predicted a 60 percent higher risk of anxiety here you can see when we get regular exercise, we boost our self-esteem, reduce stress, decrease anxiety, and improve our sleep. In that same study, Candola says that the most surprising aspect is that in older studies, there was a 17% higher odds of depression, but in their study, they found a 98%. That's 98%. That's like almost guaranteed you're going to be more depressed if you're a person who is not training or not working on their fitness, right? So do you want to be happy or sad? All it takes is up to about 10 minutes of fitness in a day. You don't have to crush yourself on the daily to get it going. The health benefits of keeping fit are undeniable, says the study. Um, If you don't have a regular exercise, don't worry. Don't push yourself too hard, they say. And that's kind of what we preach here at Stick To It Fit. If the struggle to reach 30 minutes of exercise per day then you may want to try to break it down look at this the same advice that we've been advising day by day here dr nadelman suggests starting with five minutes and adding an additional five minutes each day of each week until reaching 30 minutes you could also hire a trainer oh i wonder if anybody knows a trainer around here or ask a friend or loved one to exercise with them so if you don't have a friend for yourself you know most of the clients with us wouldn't deny that they wouldn't have gotten as far if they didn't have a trainer so you may want to consider Visiting Stick To It Fitness personal training studio right down the street on the interwebs via Skype. We do do coaching via Skype for nutrition, but we also do it for fitness on the regular. We have clients that see me two times and three times a week where we train them from their home, from my home, right? So if you even have just bands at home, we can get a complete workout for you. Feel free to send me a message and let me know if you want some extra help. All right, with that... Just keep that in mind, at least 10 minutes of exercise, but maybe if you could get in 20 and don't think about exercise as crushing yourself. You don't got to crush yourself. Just get out there. The biggest thing I can encourage you to do is take three 10-minute walks a day. That's three 10-minute walks a day. It improves blood pressure. It will improve anxiety. It will improve depression. It will increase your creativity. It helps you metabolize food better. It helps with insulin sensitivity if you're worried about diabetes and hypertension. It helps with that as well, getting your blood circulating. So there's no reason not to go take those 10-minute walks. Every single one of you in this group knows how to walk i know that so let's think about that when we're getting a little bit more lethargic we just need to get a little bit more movement all right moving over now to the habit roll call of the day the world famous habit roll call. Shazam! I'm here, and we're giving credit to everybody from yesterday's check-in. Good morning, says Evelyn. We read that one off yesterday, so I don't want to reread that one since it was a little sad. She had a little pinched nerve, but we're here hoping that that gets better soon, Miss Evelyn. Just like says Sammy, thank you for that check-in, and thank you, everybody, for being so kind to her. 
Evelyn Price says, nice to stick it on the sugar. Oops, excuse me. Chantel says, nice to stick it on the sugar. I would have crumbled. <laughs> Chantel, you got to believe in yourself. Evelyn Price used to deal with sugar issues her whole life. It's not something that you can't do. Don't let your identity stop you. Evelyn has recreated her identity around sugar. And Chantel, you can do it too. Snacking doesn't have to be your identity. We can all build together on just following that little guideline. If we just follow the guideline of six grams of sugar, over time, it becomes easy, I promise. That being said, I crumble sometimes too. So I do hear what you're saying, Chantel. Baron Adams, weight is 204, squats will be 17. Eating has been an 8 out of 10. He's getting his 18 squats in today. Chantel says, not a great day yesterday. I think I was overly tired today. Echelon already done and hardcore in 15 minutes, so it'll be a good day. Hell yeah, baby. Let's give you a round of applause for that one. Way to kill it, Chantel. You're awesome. Thank you so much for being in here in this group. We love having you as an addition. And uh, Sammy says, was a good day. As says, Ice Cube, today was a good day. Brandy, Dryberg Stoltz, good morning. Water with 70 ounces, day five, gluten-free. She's probably on day six now. Had one small mistake. I need to be more aware of my ingredients, but I'm moving on. I felt great. Boom, baby. Mr. Iggy got up early this morning, got in 20-minute ride, and did some arms and chest work. I may not be going to Hawaii with the body I wanted, but I'm still going, and I'm still going to enjoy the hell out of it. Peace out for a week. Boom, baby. No check-ins for Mr. Iggy for the next coming week because he's going to be busy in Hawaii enjoying his wedding. So we can't wait to hear how that goes. Celebrating to you. Oh. Iggy said, I mean, Evelyn says, I'm sure you will look fine just the way you are. Have a wonderful honeymoon. He does. He's, his upper body's getting jacked. Jonathan Hernandez, yesterday I got my workout in. It wasn't as great as it normally goes, which is weird because I ate before I worked out and had great sleep the night before. Split squats is at eight reps for 25 pounds. Today will be better. I feel a ton of energy and I'm excited for the gym time. Dude, Jonathan, I hear you, brother. Um... Some workouts are not going to be as good as you think they're going to be. And sometimes that's the thing about training. That's why we have to show up to the gym when we don't feel good. Because there are times when you think you're going to feel amazing and you go to the gym. And you're like, dude, this wasn't as good as I thought it would be. But then to the opposite of that, there are times when you feel like dog crap and you just don't want to do it. But then when you get there and start doing it, you're like setting PRs and doing records. You just don't know how it's going to be. So you have to show up, right? You just don't know. Uh, I've had times where I've just felt terrible and I showed up and I crushed it and I hear that over and over from other athletes. So that's something to consider to everybody out there. When you're not feeling good, that doesn't mean that we should just not do anything. Mr. Matt Bailey, 55 second ice blast. Holy cow, Mr. Matt. That's cold. You're getting up there with that seconds. Gratitude, six push-ups, five crutches, four lunges, three glute bridges, two supermans, one low plank, and again, a partridge in a pear tree. Sammy, day eight, heavy back day and triceps with Michael Lamb. Heck yeah, I'm glad we got some team workouts going on here. And Ken, she wants to know, how was your Monday? Uh, Ken says, legs felt sore, was going to do Kyoto, but ended up doing any, not doing anything Monday. Hopefully today, though. Well, thank you for checking in, Mr. Ken. Like we mentioned yesterday, it's a great idea just to start a habit of something small right? That way we don't have to think about maybe today or maybe, you know, those words make it difficult to burn in a habit. The way to burn in a great habit is to just pick it very small thing you know you can accomplish daily and just build on that. And I promise you it's going to change your life. We're going to keep preaching that because I just believe in that system so much. And I just hope that we can get more people on board with that system instead of thinking I got to do this whole thing or not do this whole thing. Right? I don't want to use, keep using you as an example, Ken, since you're new here. I don't want you to feel like I'm picking on you because I'm not. I just want to see other people learn from this. And so when you say ended up not doing anything, and hopefully today, it just kind of leaves room for error. You know, when you're saying hopefully, it's like, eh, maybe, maybe not. But for us, you know, like when the, mo like the morning wake up, when I do my kettlebell swings, there's no maybe about that. That's just like automatic. Right? I wake up, I swing. I wake up, I brush my teeth. That's just how it works. Baron wakes up, he does his squats. Iggy wakes up, he does his deadlifts. Uh, you know, Evelyn looks at the, she's going to eat. She looks at the, the labels. Does it have six grams? Yes or no. There isn't really a maybe there. So it makes it much easier to do it. Again, Ken, I don't want you to feel like I'm picking on you because I'm definitely not. I just want us to all feel that vibe together of locking in things and sticking to it because that's obviously what we're doing here. Mike Wasman, day 11 of keto with my mom. The sugar cravings get kind of intense sometimes, but we always have plenty of keto snacks around to make sure everything goes smoothly. Mr. Michael Wasman, sometimes uh, the cravings can come about from some of those snacks. 
if you have things that are like high reward, they could be also tweaking the brain a little bit to be like, oh, I kind of want more treats. It's a good idea to go for about 72 hours without any sort of like super rewarding thing. Like super rewarding, I mean, like high spiking reward. So there's like a lot of artificial flavoring in some of the things you're doing. I would consider just taking three days in a row of just eating real foods, plants, you know, vegetables, fruits, but like lower glycemic fruits. I would stay away from bananas. Uh, I'd stick with maybe like berries or something like that or like a quarter slice of orange and then making sure your protein stays high and that your main meals are big enough. If your main meals are big, then it won't be as big of an issue to stick to it because you're going to be full. I think that's a mistake that I see a lot in with clients and members that I've worked with over the past is that when they are trying to diet, they think that they need to eat less calories overall, so then they make their main meals not so big either. And when you're eating smaller meals, you're going to have a harder time not snacking. But if you really fill yourself up with big meals for, you know, lunch and dinner or breakfast, lunch and dinner, however you're doing it, you know, let's say if you're going keto, if you had a huge breakfast scramble without any potatoes or anything like that, right? Just eggs or turkey sausage and bell peppers and mushrooms, to whatever, tomatoes, whatever you want to put in there, right? Then you have your lunch, you have like maybe a, a, a kale salad with salmon on it. And then for dinner, maybe you have like broccoli cauliflower that doesn't sound as tasty to me right now but you know asparagus something like that with like a good steak and a little bit of butter on it right you have that you're going to be very full and you're not going to want to snack as much i promise all right everybody that's today's check-in for tuesday uh the takeaway here is we want to get in routine exercise it doesn't have to crush you you just want routine exercise to help alleviate anxiety and depression if anxiety and depression takes a hold of you it's also going to take a hold of your diet i promise because when you're not feeling good you're going to want to go eat crappy stuff so if we keep moving the anxiety and depression won't take us on and i say this as a former fat kid who is addicted to foods right now, when I looked at myself in the mirror this morning, I was like, holy crap, my abs are looking good. And the only way I was able to say that are through the things I'm talking about in this video. So just keep that in mind. All right, everybody, stick to it to get to it. I'm Trainer Steve, and I am out. You gotta stick to it to get to it.